Hey, praise the Lord, Brother Clinton here. Welcome to my office once again, and welcome to the Word Prophet channel. For those of you who are not familiar with this ministry, this is a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, as Jesus Christ commanded in John 4, 24. So it came to pass that this afternoon a brother wrote to me, a young brother who was just recently baptized into our Lord Jesus Christ in California. And he said that a couple of Jehovah's Witnesses came to his door, and he was describing to me the the, um, the situation where he was trying to witness to them and the, the things that they brought up. And so I thought I would make a short video about this um, regarding how to witness to Jehovah's Witnesses. There's a couple other videos on this channel that will go into a little more detail if you're uh, willing to and, and desires to learn about that. But I just uh, would like to make a short video about this. They came to his door and they were trying to teach him because as we know, this is, as I said, this is a Christian ministry and Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians. Okay, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, I don't have any apology for that, although I'm not saying that to offend you. I just want to, you know, keep everything honest and open as I'm instructed to do, to do in the scripture. And the Jehovah's Witnesses have a different Jesus than Christians do and the Jehovah's Witnesses have a different gospel than Jesus, than, than Christians do. And for that reason, because they have a different Jesus and a different gospel, they're, according to the Bible, they're not Christians. Okay, that said, um, these Jehovah's Witnesses came to this brother's door and they began to try to explain to him that Jesus is a spirit being that existed with the Father before he was sent into the world. And this is the Jehovah's Witness doctrine. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They believe that Jesus Christ is a spirit being that he is another God, that there are actually two gods, that one God is Jehovah and the other God is Jesus. That's what the Jehovah's Witnesses believe. And so they don't know who Jehovah is and they don't know who Jesus Christ is because the Bible says that God was manifest in the flesh. And Jesus Christ said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Jehovah's Witnesses hate that verse of the scripture. But, um, the, well, Jehovah's Witnesses hate all of the scripture basically, except for the perversion of the few verses that they try to use to teach their doctrine. And they, they proceeded to try to teach this young brother that, G, that Jesus was a spirit being who existed with the Father before he came into the world. And in order to do that, he said that they, they gave him two verses of the scripture, 2 Corinthians 1.20 and Revelation 3.14. And neither one of those verses says anything that has anything to do with the notion that Jesus was supposedly a spirit being who existed with the Father before he came into the world. Um, I want to share those two verses of Scripture with you just briefly. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says this, for, in, for, excuse me, for all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him amen unto the glory of God by us. All right, this is a very simple verse of the Scripture. It, it requires really no explanation. It, it says what it means. All the promises of God in Him, in Jesus Christ, are yea and amen. Okay, we can see that by reading the previous verse. He, he said, For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea, for all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Which is to say that the fact that Jesus Christ came into the world and, and fulfilled the covenant um, that he spoke of in Exodus um, or actually, that well, he fulfilled the covenant that he spoke of in Jeremiah, I should say, in Jeremiah chapter 31. All the promises of God in him are, yea, he came and fulfilled the covenant of the, the living God and shed his blood and, and the covenant is ratified. And so all the promises that God made unto his people through Jesus Christ, his son, are now, yea, and amen, which means that when we who are in Jesus Christ read a promise of God in the scripture, we don't have to wonder if that promise is for us or if God is going to fulfill that promise because he's going to fulfill that promise. He has fulfilled his word in Jesus Christ. And so if he said, he, if he promised something to us in the scripture, that means that that belongs to us as long as we obey God and believe his word. Praise the Lord. And so all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Praise the Lord. Does God say that we are healed with his stripes? Yes, he does. So do we need healing? Sometimes we do. If we, if we need healing, we can come to God and we can know that all the promises of God in Jesus Christ are yea and amen. And this is why Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that has nothing to do with what the Jehovah's Witnesses are talking about at all. 
Um, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, is something that, that they get very confused about. And I could preach a message on this for about an hour, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I'm going to understand, I'm going to assume that you who are watching this video are a Christian and you understand who Jesus Christ is, the Son of God, that there is no Trinity, that there is no triune God. Uh, there is one God who has come in the flesh by manifesting himself in the flesh in his Son, Jesus Christ. And so Revelation 3.14 is the beginning of the, the letter to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. And it says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. All right. And for some reason, these Jehovah's Witnesses seem to think that the words the Amen mean that Jesus Christ is a spirit being that existed with the Father before he came into, into the world. And I have no idea why they think that. It has nothing to do with that at all. Um, the Amen means exactly what the next phrase says, the faithful and true witness. Jesus Christ is the faithful and true witness. He is a man, the only man that ever existed, who never told a lie, who is the faithful and true witness. He's the only man that ever existed who knew the Father as he was known of the Father and declared the Father unto the world. So he is the faithful and true witness. And he is the Amen. Praise the Lord. And he is the beginning of the creation of God. Now, this is the phrase that many people in various cults and religions get stuck on. Because those of us who know Jesus Christ, we know who he is and we know who his Father is. Okay, Because his Father is our Father and his God is our God. Um, the beginning of the creation of God is a perfectly simple statement that tells us that all things were created by him and for him, that everything that was created was created around the fact that God was going to send his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to make man in his image. Okay? God said this in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our image. God planned before the foundation of the world to send his son, Jesus Christ, into the world in his image to make man in his image because man had fallen into sin. And so the beginning of the creation of God means that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the center of all things that were created. And before he ever existed, all things were created for him, all around the fact that Jesus Christ would come into the world in the flesh. And so the beginning of the creation of God is a, is, is a very simple and, and, and concise statement that means exactly what it says. But it doesn't mean what a lot of people think it's, it means, and that's because they don't know who Jesus Christ is. And, and the Jehovah's Witnesses are one of those cults, and they believe that the beginning of the creation of God doesn't mean the beginning of the creation of God, but that it rather means the first man that was, or the first being that was created by God. You see? Just like all other cults and religions, you know, the Mormons, the Catholics, the Baptists, and all these other people, they look at this verse of the Scripture, and they imagine that the words that are there aren't there, and that there are other words there. They imagine that it means something that it doesn't say. And they imagine that it's saying, instead of the beginning of the creation of God, they imagine that it's saying, the first being that was created by God. But it doesn't say that, and it doesn't mean that at all. So this is where the Jehovah's Witnesses stumble on that. Now, I'm not going to get into a long dissertation about that, because that's not what this video is about. I've already been talking for about eight and a half minutes. So here's what I want to get into. The Jehovah's Witnesses, with all due respect to them as people, they're very nice people, they're very devout people, they are not our enemies. Okay? The, the one who has deceived them is our enemy. The Jehovah's Witnesses, the people, they are not our enemies. They are deceived people. They're victims. Okay? Um, and they are very nice and devout people, but they are not Christians. They are theologians. And that's a very important thing for us to remember, those of us who are Christians. When I say us, I'm talking to those of you who are my brethren in Jesus Christ, those of you who are baptized in his name and filled with his spirit and walking in the truth of his word. The Bible says that whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Second John verse 9. So we know that people that are teaching a different Jesus, a different doctrine, or a different gospel are not in Jesus Christ. They don't have God, and, and they're not Christians. Okay? So rather than get into a theological discussion with them, which is exactly what they want, um, and when I say they, I'm not talking about the fact that as, as human beings, they're purposely trying to deceive you, because they're not. They're deceived. That's why they're deceiving you. They're not purposely trying to deceive you. They're really honestly trying to teach you the things that they think are right. But they have been deceived. 
Okay, so rather than allowing their father, the devil, through them to draw you out into a theological discussion, which is exactly what their father, the devil, wants, and that's exactly what they're trying to do, just preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. Just ask them, as, as it's written in the scripture, when Paul came across disciples in Ephesus in the, in the 19th chapter of Acts, what was the first thing that Paul asked them? He didn't ask them, well, well do, do you believe that Jesus is a spirit being that existed with the Father before, the, you know, before he came into the world? No. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Have you received the Holy Ghost? When you ask a Jehovah's Witness this, um, one of two things is going to happen. Either they, they're, they're going to say yes because they don't know what receiving the Holy Ghost means, or they're not going to have an answer at all because they know the answer is no. If they answer yes, then you can explain to them, then you can say, well, that's great. Have, you know, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you speak with other tongues and prophesy, right? I mean, that's what the scripture says. And then, of course, they will begin to, you know, hem and haw and say, well, I, well, I, and whatever that they might say. I've never actually had one of them respond to my question when I asked them that. Usually they just either don't answer the question or try to change the subject. Um, and so I don't know what their organization teaches them about receiving the Holy Ghost, but the scripture says that when you receive the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ in you, the hope of glory, that you will speak with other tongues and prophesy. And the Bible says that if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So when you're talking to a Jehovah's Witness, they, or they come to talk to you or whatever, the first thing that you want to ask them is, hey, praise the Lord, have you received the Holy Ghost? You know, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you'll speak with other tongues and prophesy. In fact, let me share that with you from Acts chapter 2, you can say to them. In Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, this is what will happen to you. Has this happened to you, my friend? Have you received the Holy Ghost? And of course, they have not received the Holy Ghost. They're not Christians. They don't have Christ in them. They, they, they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And so they'll be totally confounded by this. And the idea is not to, to confound them as if it were some sort of goal of ours and that, and that we were happy that they were confounded. The idea is to present to them the Word of God so that they will either do one of two things. They will either go away and leave you alone or they will desire to learn of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. You see, always remember, my brothers and my sisters, this is not about winning an argument. Remember that the scripture says in Proverbs 13, 10, only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. The fact that you may or may not win an argument is irrelevant. Okay, winning an argument doesn't mean that you're right. It just means that you won the argument. It just means that you spoke better or louder or whatever. Winning an argument is irrelevant, and that is not our goal ever at any time. Okay? Our goal is to preach the word of God and that those who have ears to hear, hear it and come to Jesus Christ. And those who don't have ears to hear, they're not going to hear it. And they may think that they've won the argument and walk away. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, that's between them and God. The fact that they may think that they've won an argument and walk away does not mean that you have lost. It means that you have won, my brother and my sister, because you have given them the word of God. They have rejected it and walked away in their pride, thinking that they were right and you were wrong. Okay, that's your victory and their defeat. Even though they don't perceive it as that right now, that's really irrelevant because what is relevant is what's going to happen when Jesus Christ sits on his throne to judge the world in righteousness. Praise the Lord. So just ask them, my friend, have you received the Holy Ghost? And, and if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, how are you a Christian? If you don't have Christ in you, the hope of glory, then how are you a Christian if you don't have the Holy Ghost? Another thing you can ask them is, is, you know, go to the end of the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Show them that verse of the Scripture. And then ask them, what is the name that Jesus was talking about? What is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Can you tell me the answer to that question? And of course, they won't be able to tell you the answer to that question. Because to tell you the answer to that question will deny the doctrine that they believe and that they're trying to teach you. They will have to deny their doctrine in order to answer that simple question. And so you can just say to them, well, with all due respect, my friend, if you can't or won't answer one of the simplest questions of all the scripture, what is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Then, you know, with all due respect, we have nothing to talk about.
if you know if you want to hear my father's word then I'll be happy to share it with you if not you know I, I bid you good day so this is the bottom line when, when Jehovah's Witnesses come to you don't let them draw you out into a theological discussion about who they think Jesus Christ is because we know that they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ we know that the Jesus that they're talking about is not the Jesus that we're talking about all right if they desire to learn praise the Lord that's the second point the first point is preach the gospel to them don't let them get, get you you know caught up in theological discussions that are going to turn into an argument just preach the gospel to them all right the second thing is that they are they you are not to allow them to preach to you you are there to preach to them okay when they come to you and they want to preach to you you need to make known to them politely you know with all due respect I am I'm a Christian so I can't be a Jehovah's Witness and I am not interested in hearing the doctrine of the Jehovah's Witnesses however if you all are witness if, if you all are interested in hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ here's my Bible I've got Jesus Christ in me I'd be happy to open up my Bible and share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ so that you can be saved you see, because the scripture says, if any man come unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. See, for he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. So, if a Jehovah's Witness comes to you and begins to speak to you, two things. Number one, preach the gospel to him. Don't let him draw you out into a theological discussion. Preach the gospel to him. Don't let him or her drive the conversation by asking you questions and avoiding your questions. Whatever questions you ask, don't accept any other response than the answer to that question, because otherwise they're going to try to change the subject. Okay. Number two, make it known to them politely with all due respect that this is not a situation where you are going to be listening to them preach their doctrine. Okay, it's not a give-and-take situation. It's not a, well, you preach to me your doctrine, and then I'll preach to me your doctrine. No, we're not here to give-and-take with the world. Okay, We're not here to compromise with the world. Here's the situation, you could say to them, if they're a Jehovah's Witness. Here's the situation with all due respect and in the love of Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. Okay, I believe the Holy Bible. If you would like for me to open the Holy Bible and teach you about the doctrine of Jesus Christ so that you can be saved, I'll be happy to do that. But if you have come to me to try to teach me the doctrine of the Jehovah's Witness organization, I want to tell you right now that I'm not going to be open to that. I'm not going to hear that because it's contrary to the scripture. It's just that simple. Praise the Lord. You know, and don't tell them God bless you. Uh, and don't pray with them or, or you know, do anything with them as, as you would do with a Christian. Let them know with all due respect and in love that they are not Christians, that they are not in the faith of Jesus Christ, and that you are willing to share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ but if they don't want to hear that, then you have nothing to talk about. It's just that simple. Okay? Don't get frustrated about trying to win an argument with them because you're not going to win an argument with them. All right? They're very stubborn in their beliefs. They're very stuck in their beliefs. They're very afraid that if they don't teach their doctrine well enough, that they won't make it into the kingdom of Jehovah, as they say. They're, they're under bondage because of that. You see, they're afraid. That's why they're out there doing what they're doing, because they're afraid that they're going to go to hell if they don't do the, the, the work of a Jehovah's Witness good enough. You see, because they, they don't believe that all Jehovah's Witnesses are going to inherit the kingdom of Jehovah as they speak. They only believe that certain of them are going to, depending on how well they do the work that, that the Jehovah's Witness organization has sent them to do. So they're doing what they're doing out of fear. You see, they're preaching their, their, their false gospel out of fear, believing that if they don't do it well enough, they're not going to be among those few who will make it into the kingdom of Jehovah, as they say. But And I say, as they say, because the Bible doesn't say the kingdom of Jehovah in the New Testament. The Bible says, the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, my brothers, my sisters, if you talk to a Jehovah's Witness and they're willing to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, then by all means preach it to them and love them love them okay don't be mean to them don't be angry with them because they're not your enemy they are deceived okay so show them love but at the same time don't embrace them as brethren don't shake their hand don't tell them god bless you don't let them into your house unless they're willing to hear the gospel of jesus christ unless they're willing to allow you to teach them the gospel of jesus christ don't let them into your house all right just preach to them the gospel of jesus christ it's just that simple. And if they don't want to hear it, then send them on their way. It's just that simple. So don't let them draw you out into an argument. And don't be 
concerned about winning an argument with them because you're not going to win an argument with them. Okay? Because they're not going to believe the doctrine of Jesus Christ. They're not going to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if they are, for some reason, if you found one of them that, that will believe the gospel, praise God, preach the gospel to them. This is the message that I have for you in Jesus' name this day. May this be a blessing to you, little brother who wrote me, and all of, the, all of those of you out there who eventually will encounter a Jehovah's Witness. And uh, so may this be a blessing to you and also to whoever it is that you shared with. In Jesus' name, amen.